Good morning, greetings, and welcome, friends, to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, if you have questions about the Longevity products, the Longevity business, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. 844-236-6010. We've got lines open. Try to call in early. If you uh, want to purchase any of the Longevity products, you hear advertiser recommended on the Bright Side, you can call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, or you can order Longevity products directly off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can be a member of the team. Get your products at the wholesale price. Earn thank you checks associated with spreading the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. It's a great business to be in if you're an entrepreneur, if, you're, uh, if you enjoy the network marketing direct sales model. It's an awesome business for that. A lot of people are doing really well. You do have to work the business. You do have to be a business-type-minded person, but if, even if you're not, if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, or call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. By now, most of you, or many of you, probably heard about uh, Tom Petty one of my favorite musicians. In case you haven't heard, yesterday he died of a cardiac arrest, only 66 years old, pretty darn young. 66 years old. He had a lot of living left. A lot of life, a lot of life was left for Tom Petty to uh, potentially have lived. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen. A cardiac arrest is basically when your heart just stops. It's like an electrical phenomena. And you don't necessarily have to have heart disease or uh, arrhythmias or fibrillations or electrical problems in the heart for this to occur. There's over 300,000 cardiac arrests that occur, uh, 325,000, I think, is what I read this morning from the American Heart Association. And uh, cardiac arrest is not a heart attack. Heart attacks are more about blockages, lack of oxygen to the heart, lack of nutrients to the heart. Uh, uh, cardiac arrest is an electrical phenomenon, basically when the electrical system just poops out. But you know what? It's all basically the same things in the, in the sense that we have to do the same things for our heart. It, it, the, heart it, it can, it, the, the health of the heart uh, can manifest itself, or poor health of the heart can manifest itself as electrical f- problems, as blockages, as lack of oxygen. That doesn't really matter. The point is, is that if you want to keep your heart healthy, if you want to prevent a cardiac arrest or a blockage or a heart attack, if you just want to keep your heart healthy, you got to do the same basic things you got to do to keep uh, every system of the body healthy. We've been talking about uh, mechanisms or strategies or protocols for dealing with the heart now, for dealing with heart disease for a couple of days. But you know what? 
you probably have heard me say these things before when it comes to any system, when it comes to the, even the skin or the liver or the lungs or the brain. You've got to do the same basic things. So no surprise, the first most important thing you've got to do to keep your heart healthy is change the way we eat. And I am not preaching to anybody about food. I never, I, I, you always want to be very careful about talking to people about food. It's a very personal thing. But the fact of the matter is, if, if you are dealing with heart disease and you're on a beta blocker or a calcium channel blocker, the most powerful strategy you can use to take care of your heart is not taking a drug. The most powerful strategy is controlling what you eat. It's a point of power. It's a place where we have leverage over our health without the doctor. That's the only point I'm trying to make. So whether Tom Petty had heart disease or uh, he didn't, if he had followed basically the same protocols we're talking about here today for dealing with heart attacks and, and uh, blockages and, and, and more traditional, more, uh, more uh, uh, in the news forms of heart disease, more topical forms of heart disease, it doesn't really matter. You've got to do the same things. Yesterday we talked about calorie restriction. A really important strategy for keeping, uh, for keeping the heart healthy. Laying off sugar. Probably the two most important things you could do to keep your heart healthy are a calorie restriction, which is uh, going to, uh, we're going to talk about the ketogenic diet here in a second. The ketogenic diet is also really, really important for keeping the heart healthy. It's similar to calorie restriction. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Laying off sugar, again, uh, laying off sugars also uh, tends to make the body more ketogenic. A lot of the, the, the generic health strategies like calorie restriction and eating certain kinds of fats and laying off sugar, laying off carbs, these are all really keto, uh, have their benefits because they're ketogenic. They help the body make ketones and the body loves ketones and the heart loves ketones, especially a weak heart. So keeping uh, uh, sugar intake down, calorie restriction, we also absolutely 100% positively need to understand and we need to learn to leverage fat, learn to take advantage of fat. First of all, by understanding what fat is and what it isn't, what fat does and what it doesn't do. There's a lot of misunderstandings about fat. And we're last, uh, it's getting better, I will say, but for a long time, for like, since from the 1950s forward, there was this demonization of fat that totally didn't serve us. Dr. Wallach talks about the politics of the demonization of fat and the uh, elevation of the carbohydrate hypothesis for good health. Eat more carbs, eat more starch, eat, eat more grains. It's kind of a, a, a bunch of politics that were involved in that, and it didn't do anything. In fact, our heart disease epidemic got worse. So anyway, understanding fats is extremely, extremely important. Understanding them and then leveraging them and not following conventional wisdom. You know what, it's a good idea to be really, really skeptical of conventional wisdom in all things. You know, if everybody's doing it, we wanna think twice about it. If everybody believes it, we wanna think twice about it. There's always a conventional wisdom. I'm not saying it's not right sometimes, maybe it is, but uh, you know, not, you just gotta be a little bit skeptical of conventional wisdom, especially when it comes to health, because there are industrial, financial, political reasons why we get this, the, the information that we do about health. I hear people on the phone, when I talk to people on the phone, or when I talk to people, they'll say, well, I eat really well, I, I have a good diet. And I'll say, how do you know you have a good diet? How do you know you eat well? Well, you know, that's, I eat just uh, organic or I eat just vegetables or, you know, I, I uh, just have meat and eggs. We get, our, we get our information about what's good to eat basically from the mainstream media, basically from what doctors tell us, conventional wisdom. But conventional wisdom can't be all that. All, can't be all that. Conventional wisdom can't be really 100% accurate because look how sick we are. Right? So, a contrary to conventional wisdom, saturated fat, for example, may not be all that bad for your heart. We don't really know that. That's conventional wisdom that saturated fat is. That's what your doctor will tell you. But there is, you know, uh, there's uh, some controversy around it. And there's some reasons why saturated fat is actually really important. We'll talk about the study when we come back from our break from a couple of, uh, from, th from three different researchers, heart researchers, that it's kind of surprising when it comes to saturated fat. We'll do that when we come back from our break. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010 on Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this. We 
are back on the bright side. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about uh, heart disease, hypertension, anything we're speaking about here today. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you have a want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, Please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, or you can purchase products right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also purchase our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com. All our Truth products are treatments. They're not really products that you just rub on your skin. It's not a moisturizing line. It's not a skincare line, and it's not even skincare. Truth is about treatments. That's why you only use a drop. And I know many of you, uh, many of my listeners have used the Truth products. You know what I'm talking about. Just one little drop goes a ridiculously long way. Two drops, three drops is all you need for a maximum three drops. These are like dosing your skin with nutrients, dosing them. Not just smearing it on, but dosing your skin. They're designed to work. The, uh, the ingredients are designed to work at the active uh, viable cells, that is the growing cells, which are lower in the skin, and you're getting pretty much just what you need, just vitamin C and vitamin A, and uh, uh, transdermal penetrating ingredients. In fact, that's all you're getting. You're not getting any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes. These are akin to medicines. They're therapeutic. They're not medicine in the sense they're not drugs, but they're therapeutic, and they're treatments, and that's why the products last so long. And that's why, you know, if you're looking at the price point, Yes, the price point is higher because these are treatments and they last a really long time. And you're really making changes in your skin. That's what I learned in the pharmacy. When I, I had a compounding pharmacy where I made skin care products for people who had broken skin. I compounded skin care medicine for them and I never used drugs. I should say I rarely use drugs. Occasionally I would put in a little steroid or something if I had to. But for the most part, it was all vitamin A and vitamin C. And what I discovered was if you heal the skin, you get everything else you want. You get the moisturizing, you get the anti-aging, you get the anti-wrinkle if you focus on healing. And that's why all my truth treatments, by the way, can be used to help heal the skin. You can put them on your cut or your scrape and they will accelerate the healing of your cut and scrape. You think your, your Neutrogena, blah, 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 Cindy Crawford, blah, 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 will do that? No. Anyway, truthtreatments.com, check out all our true skin health products. Never anything, uh, everything you need, Nothing your skin doesn't in any of our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com. All right, so we're talking about uh, the heart and conventional wisdom and saturated fats. I read a paper, I read about a paper here today, uh, earlier this morning, by uh, a guy named Pascal Meyer, M-E-I-E-R, a cardio cardiologist at University College of London and editor of the journal, British Medical Journal Heart, or British Medical Journal Open Heart. Uh, he wrote this paper along with a couple other, a couple other folks, Rita Redberg and uh, Asim Mahora. These are all researchers. Uh, they conclude with their study, uh, saturated fat, or they conclude that there was no association between saturated fat consumption and mortality, coronary heart disease, uh, coronary heart disease mortality, ischemic stroke or type 2 diabetes in healthy adults, unquote. Okay, so there's a lot of controversy about this idea whether saturated fats are really bad for your heart. On the other hand, saturated fats from animal foods, from eggs, from organ meats, uh, these kinds of foods, these saturated fat rich animal foods, contain something called the cholesterol complex. Now, I, I've never heard, I, I made up the term because what I saw was that in organ meats and in eggs, to a certain extent dairy, although mostly in organ meats and in eggs, you get cholesterol. But with that cholesterol, you get other substances. Cholesterol is associated in organ meats and in eggs with vitamin A, with vitamin K, with vitamin D, with phospholipids like lecithin. It's associated in this complex with all of these wonderful heart-healthy substances. And uh, saturated fat and cholesterol as well. And saturated fat, uh, uh, if you get your saturated fat from these kinds of foods, you're going to get this cholesterol complex. So 
Uh, in addition to the fact that we don't necessarily know that saturated fats uh, are the cause or are somehow toxic to the heart, certainly they're not as bad uh, as the unsaturated fats. Now, that's re really where you run into a problem with the heart. This is what Dr. Wallach and other nutritionists talk about, is uh, unsaturated fats, the kinds that are in liquid fats. Saturated fats generally are solid fats, and unsaturated fats are generally liquid fats. There's some overlap. Uh, liquid fats are really where you run into the problem, the polyunsaturated fats. See, saturated fats are stable. They're like solid. They're like a rock. The unsaturated fats, they're liquid. They're volatile. They're, they have high energy. Liquids have higher energy than solids do. And this makes them unstable, and this makes them problematic, especially when you heat. Now, uh, you know... Uh, of course, there's always a little, uh, it's never really cut and dry. And as it turns out, there are actually good things in your uh, polyunsaturated fat-rich oils. There's actually good nutrients in things like olive oil. There's actually good nutrients in uh, a macadamia nut oil. There's even good nutrients in grain oils if they're not processed, but they come at a price. And so I've always said that you want to be a little, you don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. You want to just be super duper duper careful with your uh, liquid oils. On the other hand, saturated fats, not only do they have the cholesterol complex, uh, and oh, by the way, butter is extra important for the heart. In fact, butter and coconut oil are probably the two most important saturated fats for the heart. And this uh, eating more saturated fats, uh, uh, eating more butter, I should say, uh, will help support the ketogenic diet. And that's another very important thing for, that you can do for your heart. So understand fat, eat good fat, eat your butter, eat your coconut oil. Uh, also, eat, make sure that you're getting uh, fat-soluble nutrients, things like vitamin E, vitamin A, vitamin D. These are all going to be found in the cholesterol complex. And then there's also something that needs to be said for the Mediterranean diet. Longevity actually has a product line now that is the Mediterranean diet in a capsule. Uh, basically, it's these things called polyphenols. Now, some of you will remember that many months ago when we started talking about the subject, you know, uh, t uh, started talking about the heart, we really started talking about the heart because we were talking about the polyphenols. The polyphenols are unbelievably heart-friendly. And very interestingly, there is a... Uh, there's some interesting chemistry that takes place between vegetable oils and vegetables. That is between uh, olive oil and vegetables that you would eat in a salad. When you put olive oil on a salad, there's some very interesting chemistry that uh, is sort of created between the, the, your, the lettuce and the spinach and the kale and the olives and the oil. When they interact... They produce some very important heart-friendly compounds. And this is what's thought to be uh, the key to the Mediterranean diet. In addition to polyphenols, which are, if you haven't heard the term, those are basically plant nutrients that are released when they're combined with oil. And it's hard to argue with the Mediterranean diet. You know, uh, there's a lot of folks living long lives, long healthy lives in the Mediterranean area. They're not eating fast food, but they're eating uh, uh, lots of salads and lots of seafood. And guess what lots of salads with olive oil, of course, and lots of seafood have in common? Good fat. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back with you and your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number right after this. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. You can also check out our blog posts and news stories at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, as well as all the Longevity products. And you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites as well. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. We have lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to take Richard now. Got a bunch of stories, and we do, uh, we do have uh, lines open. So after Richard, we'll just read some news stories here, unless uh, you want to give us a shout at 844-236-6010. Good morning, Richard in Texas. What's going on, buddy? Hello. 
Hello, Ben. It's uh, nice to talk to you. Um, nice to talk to I, you. I uh, want to uh, see what I can do to get off the uh, uh, pharmaceutical drugs that I'm on. I had a, uh, a heart condition, uh, which was actually the <clears throat> deterioration of my mitral valve, and I had surgery ultimately to replace that. Um, I had a heart infection. I had a stroke and all that. They didn't really think I was going to make it, but I flew oh my in the hospital quite a while. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How old are you? I am 66. And oh, you're I a young am, man. Yeah, I am uh, almost six foot three, and I only weigh about 155, 160 pounds these days. But uh, Have you uh, always been lean, or were you not lean when you were yeah, sick? No, I, I've always or before been lean. I, I put on a lot of muscle. Uh, some years ago when I was lifting a lot of weight, I actually blossomed up to about uh, 200, and uh, then I, I kind of shed that. I quit the workout regimen and that kind of stuff as far as that high intensity is concerned. But, yeah, I've, I've basically been a lean guy all the time. And so what were you doing that your, that your heart kind of was deteriorating so badly? Were you just not well, paying attention know, or you didn't know? or I think I was born with this mitral valve uh, situation. No. I, I don't know. That doesn't sound right to me. That doesn't sound right to me. So uh, did you not know about nutrition? Were you paying attention? Were you just not paying attention? What was the, how did that work out? How did that work for well, you? Well, you know, I've, I've been refining my diet as, uh, as time goes on and that kind of stuff. I started getting treatment for my mitral valve uh, some years ago. And it was, again, with uh, kind of pharmaceutical stuff. And I okay. decided so I, you, I didn't want were, were you part of the medical? I mean, did you buy into the medical model when you were younger kind of thing? Um, we, a little bit, but not too much. I've always been very skeptical of doctors and that kind of thing. It's probably okay. one of the things that caused me to delay. I got I gotcha. a blood clot in my ankle that kind of started all this process. And I Yeah, it I, sounds like things were breaking down for a while. So here, the, the reason I'm trying to, and I'm, I'm not picking on you or anything, but it, it just no, shows no, me where... that way. Okay, so it, just, so it just shows me places where we can work. All right, so... I'm glad you called because we've been talking about this thing for a long time. We've talked about it theoretically, but you're a real live person and you're dealing with the problem. So yeah, for other listening to a lot of your broadcast. Uh, does it make sense what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely, and particularly okay. the stuff that goes on with the gut as well. It's so important, so so important. Here's the thing about disease in general, but heart disease specifically. The body's freaked out. Okay. That's basically what disease is. I'm talking cancer, heart disease, autoimmunity. Your body is freaked out. And by freaked out, I mean just think of a baby who's been traumatized. The baby has what's called, or the child or whatever, the adult who's been traumatized, has post-traumatic stress syndrome, PTSD. The body has its own version of PTSD. So what you got to do when the body has PTSD, as you have to do with, when a soldier comes back from Iraq with PTSD, is you got to calm things down. You with me? Yep. You got to slow things down. You got to start running energy, uh, torque, more torque and less revolutions. Does that make sense? How I said that? You, uh, do you understand the not completely. Okay. So you you ride ever ride a you've ridden a bicycle, I'm sure, right? You ever ride a ten speed bicycle? Like it has different gears, different speeds. Yep. yep. Okay. So you know if you're in a low speed, right? The wheels are not turning as fast, but they're turning with more power, right? Or the mm -hmm. gears, right? That's called yeah. torque. Now, okay. you, can, you can go up a hill by spinning your legs really fast in a high gear, right? Or you can go up the hill in, by, spinning, your, by, by uh, uh, spinning the gears really slowly but with more torque, right? Yeah. yeah. Which one's better? Uh, well, I generally used to prefer uh, pedaling faster with the higher gear. Well, that's why you're in the bigger pro – that's why you got this problem probably because the body doesn't like that. The body wants more torque. The body, it's much more efficient for the body to derive energy with higher torque than higher speed. This is why animals that are bigger live longer. Are you with me? Elephants. Yes. Elephants live longer than uh, mice. Tortoises yes. live really long. Cro crocodiles, they're really running on torque. Actually, they're running on just low energy usually. But animals that run more on torque than on speed live longer. The body loves torque. Torque is achieved by slowing things down and putting more power in. This is what nutrient density is about. Not running your body on high calories, but running it more efficiently with more nutrition. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you don't want to be running your body on high energy. You want to be running it on efficient energy. 
efficient use of energy. And this is why nutrition is important, and this is why keeping your sugar down is important, and this is why fats are important, this is why ketogenic diet is important, pretty much, it's why exercise is important, it's why relaxation is important, pretty much everything we're talking about is about doing, achieving this end of having the body use its energy more efficiently. Specifically, cells use, their, use the energy more efficiently. So what you want to do is you want more nutrient density, you want more bang for your buck in terms of calories to energy. You, are you with me when I'm saying how I'm saying all this stuff? Does it make yes, sense? Absolutely. Yes. So you want to be eating as little as possible, but eating nutrient dense. Eating as little as possible, but doing liquid nutrition. It's mm -hmm. another major strategy. Going ketogenic diet. So action steps. All right. These are all theoretical action steps. Work on the gut. On number one. That's the number one place because toxicity that gets into the blood will screw up the heart and nutrient deficiency will screw up the heart. Fix the gut. Use the nightly essence, fermented foods. Make sure you're using uh, 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 vegetables, vegetable juices, more fiber, fiber and probiotics together. That's why fermented veggies are so good. Um, mixing, uh, uh, using digestive enzymes with all of your meals, um, uh, apple cider vinegar with all your meals. And then keeping your sugar down is the next step, okay? Keeping your sugar down is so important. Diabetes and heart disease go hand in hand. And I shouldn't even say diabetes. I'm, I hate that term, diabetes, because that's, you know, people say, oh, I don't have diabetes or I have prediabetes. That all is all irrelevant. What really matters is how your blood sugar fluctuates, how high and low it goes, and how stable you can keep it. And you do that with the ketogenic diet. You do that with the sweeties from Longevity. You do that with the ultimate niacin from Longevity. You do that by keeping your sugar intake down, and that includes bread and pasta and cereal and rice and potatoes and fruit juices and, and fruits to, for the most part. You know, a little bit of fruit maybe. Uh, keeping your sugar down is incredibly important. Making sure that you're doing protein, but that you're using your protein, not just eating protein. Because if we eat our protein without using it, it goes into, it first turns into sugar, which messes up your blood sugar, and then it turns into fat. And this is one of the hugest mistakes people make when they're either going ketogenic or if they're uh, trying to uh, keep their blood sugar under control if they're diabetic, they eat more, too much protein. That protein is very important, but you've got to use that protein, and that's why exercise is important. It's important for the heart. It's important for the blood sugar. Ha hang on, Richard, because I don't have any more calls, so we're going to spend a lot of time on you, okay? All right. Uh, Thanks. Thanks, Richard. All right. That's all. Uh, we'll take a quick break and then we'll come back and continue talking some action steps with Richard. We do have lines open. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back after this. side. I'm Farm Span 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Richard and uh, got a couple more calls on the line here, Richard. So I'm going to go a little bit faster, uh, but I want to, I want to be as complete as I can here. Okay. And, and okay, keep listening to the program. Cause we're going to go, we're going to spend a few more days talking about this. And then uh, right, I think, ben, would you, would you mind if I give you a bit more information about myself? I have very little sugar. I do work out. I have recently gone on to a reduced calorie diet. I'm trying to get to where I'm just going to have one moderate meal a day. Um, and uh, I do take supplements, and uh, I'm very happy with uh, a multivitamin I take called Intramax. And, okay. Well, uh, okay. Okay. So hang on. So you have mitral valve deterioration. Okay. And then you said you had a stroke. And then tell me a couple other things that happened that you were t telling me about. I, I had a heart infection. I think all of this was the result of my mitral valve going down, and it set up all these other conditions. Mm -hmm. Heart infection, what else? Don't, let's not jump to conclusions here. Mitral valve deterioration, heart infection, and then, uh, and then you had a stroke, and what else? Yeah, that was it. Okay, that was it. Okay, so it's conceivable that something got infectious got into your blood through the digestive system or maybe even through something like dental problems there's a lot of there's a, a very high correlation between dental problems and gum problems and heart issues 
You know what I'm talking about? Stuff gets into the oh, blood, yeah. even even dental work. So it could have been something like that, you know. But nonetheless, these are all things that you want to do. Now, you're already doing a lot of this stuff, it sounds like. So let's go into the – sub. you know, there's more – there's so many different things. That's why you're going to have to keep listening. But uh, but uh, just to, just to uh, give you some supplements, which are very important, you should be doing high doses of vitamin C. In fact, if I were you, I'd be doing intravenous vitamin C, but at least high doses of it. You know what I'm saying? So like a, okay. a gram to five grams a day. Be careful of like digestive issues. Sometimes people get a little bloated or crampy or diarrhea or something like that. So just be careful there. Uh, but high doses of it. And then high doses of your fat nutrients, especially vitamin E and coenzyme Q10 and minerals. Minerals, a lot of time we don't necessarily think of them as fatty nutrients, but they are. They require fat absorption machinery, fat absorption chemistry in the body. So zinc, selenium, vitamin A. Vitamin A and zinc always go together. Uh, zinc, selenium, vitamin A, um, uh, vitamin D, of course, coenzyme Q10, vitamin E, the cholesterol complex that are found in foods, uh, anything, all the fatty nutrients. We're going to talk about the importance of fats and the membrane and heart and the heart uh, in a couple of days. Uh, but focus on fatty nutrients, also fat absorption out of the gut. Uh, if you have any bile problems, correct those. Uh, anything that you do with the intestine is going to help the liver which is going to help the gallbladder, which is going to help you absorb fats. So that whole area, you know what I'm saying? Intestine, yes. liver, gallbladder, even the stomach it plays a role in fat absorption uh, via stomach acid. So there's a, a whole bunch of stuff you could do there. Ultimate enzymes from longevity, bile salts, apple cider vinegar, those will all help you with your fat absorption. Uh, uh, pancreatin also, great enzyme. It's in the ultimate enzymes from longevity. You can always use extra pancreatin. That's another one. All right, Richard from Texas, I hope I helped you out. Yep. Well, 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 Ben, I still would like to find out how I can wean myself off of these pharmaceuticals. What on. are they on? on? What are you on? I am on uh, 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 Coumadin, uh, Metropolol, and Oh, Digicon. my goodness. You poor man. What's the last one? Digicon or Digoxin. Uh, Digoxin. Oh, my goodness. They are loading you down, brother. Holy cow. You must be tired. You must, you must have it must affect your energy, no? No, I'm I'm not too bad. I you know I am on a ketogenic diet and stuff, but well, you're I'm doing great because those, those are powerful drugs. Those are powerful drugs you're on. Yeah. Uh, you, you wean yourself off by weaning yourself off. That's how you do it. That's you just start reducing your dose. Okay. Yeah. We don't okay. know necessarily that you need it, but you work with your doctor on this because and this is important for everybody listening. When you're weaning. If you're working with a doctor, it's only fair to the doctor to work with him. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to accomplish something. Whether it's misguided or not is besides the point. Okay? You're participating with him, and this is true. But anytime you wean off, work with your doctor. I'm not a fan of the medical model. You know that. But it's not respectful to your professional, your healthcare professional who you've entrusted to help you. It's not respectful to them to go behind their back and do things. He's trying right. to work with you. You know what I'm saying? So it's always yeah. important to wean yourself off with your doctor, to work with your doctor. But it's your body. You don't need to do what he tells you to do. You, you see the difference? I'm not telling you. Oh, yeah. Not, yeah. Okay? So you don't need to take orders from the doctor. But you want to work with him. If you're, if you're working with him, you want to work with him. All right? Yep. I've, I've made that decision, and that's how I'm going to proceed. They're putting me through these INR tests on with the... Uh, 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 Coumadin stuff, you know, and uh, trying to keep me up in the zone they want me in and all that, but I'm thinking that's not something I want to follow at all. Well, I, I think you are on the right track, and healthy skepticism is always a good idea, because it's your body at the end of the day. They're going to go to bed, sleep very well at night, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right. while you're, you know, you pay the price for their advice. All right? I got to motivate. Thank you so much, Richard. Have a beautiful day. I hope we helped you. All right. Uh, I want to get to my friend John, the underwear guy. What's up, John? How you doing, buddy? Hey, how you doing, Ben? I'm doing good. What's going on? Well, thank you for taking my call. You know, where are you in the world? Kind of a, I'm in Salem, Arkansas. This I actually have a house here. Oh, you, okay. You're uh, relaxing. In a way, yeah. Okay. Kind of kicking back. I'm only here for one day, so just kind of doing a few chores. But I did want to mention something about that last caller because I was on metropolol, lisinopril, amlodipine. I was on all of those, and they wanted to put me on Coumadin, but I wouldn't go on Coumadin. <laughs> Good but for you. Instead, they were instead messing with I, the wrong guy. They were messing with the wrong guy, underwear guy. I, Sounds I like. just could not do that and do I'm my sure. job because they wanted me to come in every three or four days and get the dosage adjusted until they got it right, and I just didn't have the time to do that. 
but they did put, try to put me on, well, they did. They put me on Prodaxa. Uh, Dibicatran, I think, is the active ingredient. Okay. And, they want to, what did you have exactly? What were they, what were they treating? Well, well I, I had high blood pressure. Uh, it was starting to go up. I had a, a AFib. Uh, okay. And my AFib went up to about 200 beats per minute on the upper chamber of my heart. And, of course, the other one was kind of normal. I of was course, just you, I was you, messed up. You took corrective measures, though. I did. Uh, you know, I went I went to the VA, and they started me on metropolol, you know. Like no, no, John. Oh, John, yes. John Underwear Guy. You corrected this. Yes. You took care of this yourself. I did. I just yeah, what did, did you do? Nutrition. Uh, well, I, I lost weight. I went on, uh, before I lost weight, I went on the um, Healthy Start Pack, more or less, uh, through your recommendations. I started taking minerals, starting, I lost about 50 pounds in about eight months, and then nice. I weaned myself off my medications. And I weaned myself off the same way they put me on. In other words, I, I took it off, you know, a little bit at a time. It took me about maybe four or five months to do that. And I monitored my blood pressure while I was doing that. And when I came off you. of it, I was totally off of everything. Now I use omega-3, 6, uh, 9 fatty acids to replace for my blood. I keep my blood conditioned. Um, you know, I do the whole thing. I do exactly your protocol. As a matter of Good fact, for you. right now, as we speak, I'm having some fiber pudding. Oh, I love you know, it. The, <laughs> the, chia, the chia seeds. And chia the, seed uh, pudding. I have this. That's well with flaxseed, and, and yeah. I put a little bit of uh, psyllium uh, husk in it. Good and for you. I have this every day. Just coconut water? I do. Do, you use coconut, do you use coconut water or you coconut know, milk? No, I don't have any coconut water, but that okay. would be a great idea. I do have it, coconut it, oil, though. You can mix, well, you can mix a little of that in there, or coconut milk or coconut cream. You can go crazy, man. Put cinnamon and clove. Just have, a, have, a, have at it. I do. I do. You know, yesterday, and I, I'm embarrassed to say this, but yesterday I actually ate a whole stick of butter, and uh, I had it <laughs> not with straight. Uh, some peanut butter. Okay, not straight. Well, though. no, no, no. I mixed it with uh, a little bit of peanut butter. I, it's like my drug of choice. Butter uh, and, and peanut butter together? It, yeah. Just a stick of butter, whack off a little pad of it, stick a little peanut butter in with it, and just okay. and go. <laughs> That sounds good. I, I, did All the right. whole, I did the whole stick in about 30 minutes. I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to get sick or something. And nothing but, happened. You know what? Nothing, nothing happened. And it was delicious. It was delicious. Okay. I, I have to really, I have to stay away from it. Um, it's, I, it's, it's really. It's a little fatty to me, but I'm going to have to go experiment. I can't really do peanuts myself, so I, I'm going to have to do it with almonds. No, no, no. Like, usually, usually I do it with almonds. Uh, yeah, I, I have a problem with peanuts. Uh, peanuts are not nuts, right? They're legumes. All right. Hey, John, thanks for your call, man. I appreciate it. And I know we didn't I'm get to your question. I didn't, even, I, I didn't even get to the question. But you'll have to, you'll have to call back. That was interesting. Thank you, John. Have a great day, man. All right. Thank you so much for listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. Don't forget to check out my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for the longevity products, and then also truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com for all my truth skin health products. All right, that's it. We will talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.